It's an interesting point that they've raised, obviously, about these long-term contracts. A lot of players contracted until 2030, yes, which does seem quite mind-boggling. But, I mean, is that a thing? Can these players be too comfortable because they know they have that security? Well, you'd like to think no, because, you know, character, personality comes out. Pride, you're Well, there's even the better word, pride of, you know, yeah, you've got a long contract, you're paid handsomely for that time. Um... Would they just all switch off? Mm. You know, mm. winners are winner. People who win things have a, you know, I've always said if you play well, people will give you loads of money. If you always, if you play to a certain standard, there's always people after you. The contract in lots of cases is irrelevant, as in, as we see in football often, that someone can come and buy you. You know, Fernandez had a contract in Spain, you know, that was a lot of money to buy out. Chelsea <laughs> met that clause, you know. I, I just find it, I find it a difficult answer because Chelsea is a very complex club now. Um, after since Roman had left and what's mm. happened, you know there are other clubs following what Chelsea did. By the way, we've just seen who Undoggy uh, Tottenham sign a deal till two thousand what twenty nine something like that or two thousand thirty. You know other clubs are doing longer contracts because they see the idea of what Chelsea are doing. Um, unfortunately, it's it's fallen really badly because a load of them are playing po- poorly. Mm. Um, they've had no European football this season. So they're playing as little of football as anybody in the Premier League. They've just got the League Cup to concentrate on, yeah. which they've had a couple of victories in. But if you look at it across the board now, they've had as much rest as any team, even though they've had loads of injuries. So why is it not gelling? Why is it not clicking? I mean, this, this, goes, back, team. this goes back further, obviously, than Maurizio Pochettino. Yeah. It goes to Graham Potter. It goes as little bit, so obviously, to Thomas Tuchel's reign as well, because obviously that led to Graham Potter's com- coming in. I mean, how can you not find a settled team when you've got so well, many players? Is uh, that the problem? Too many? Well, last week was a great example of, um, you know, Sterling was left out. Um, Brozier came in for Nicholas Jackson at Everton. Um, you know, and he might think, well, I'm just having to look at other players and trying to find different solutions. I said last weekend, I couldn't believe Everton weren't favourites for that game. Because if you gave Everton their 10 points, they'd have been held to Chelsea in the league and they were playing at home and they are way more looking like a team than Chelsea. Chelsea are showing glimpses of what they're capable of. Yeah, There has been glimpses of it, but that's it. After that, you're, you're scratching your head. Cole Palmer looks mm. like he'll be a good player for Chelsea. When he initially arrived, he was terrific. Has he been as good the last few weeks? No, he hasn't. Nicholas Jackson's started indifferently, then had a bit of a, you know, got a few goals in a number of games, gets left out for Brozier. Uh, it's, it's it's a tricky one with Chelsea. They've had loads of injuries as well, so I, I appreciate that. But if you look at the team, it's only been a very slight improvement in certain games that I've seen.